We're on a little bit of a search here, a, a bit of a quest to find a mystery location. Now, I found this article online that talked about Canada's mossiest rainforest. And it's on the west coast of Vancouver Island in British Columbia. And the directions to it, well, there, there were no directions to it. So my wife and I have been driving around trying to find this mysterious location. Finally, we saw this tiny little sign right there and it doesn't exactly say the mossiest rainforest in Canada, but I think this is the right place. So what makes this place unique is that it's incredibly mossy because of course it is a rainforest, but the trees are not like an evergreen tree. They are deciduous, they're maple trees inside this forest and they're covered in moss and the ground is covered in ferns and I think we're in the right place, but yeah, look behind me here, just really incredible mossy, lichen covered, rainforesty type location. So I'm going to see if we can find something that's really photo worthy in this art form that we call landscape photography. But finding a composition is going to be somewhat difficult here. So we're going to walk and search and try and through trial and error hopefully I'm gonna come up with something that is something that can be called a photo. I'm walking around and I'm looking for something that would be an interesting composition but it's really difficult this is not easy it's it's difficult when you're in a, a dense forested type of environment to find something that is going to be a really interesting photo, an interesting main subject. And that's what I'm looking for right now. As I was walking, I could hear the sound of a river. And I just came upon a river that's directly in front of me. And there's some really cool um, maple trees right above me. I'm gonna show you. Check those out just covered in moss, really green, and I think that something here has to result in an interesting composition. I just don't know what it is yet. Here's the really interesting thing. I find that my skill set is more along the lines of the science of landscape photography, like the camera settings, the photo processing, and where I am weakest is on the art side of landscape photography because landscape photography is a science and an art. But who is good at the art side is my wife and oftentimes we'll come to a photo location such as this one and I won't find the greatest compositions but then she walks around with her iPhone and comes up with these amazing compositions and then after the shoot is done we're driving away in the car and then she'll say, oh, look what I got. She'll show me this amazing photo and I'll say, ah, why didn't I get that? Let's go back. <laughs> so she has just found some kind of an interesting composition and let's go check that out. Check out the leading line of the path behind me. It's really good. Okay, we found a leading line. This will be our first setup right here. I don't really need the tripod for this because it is pretty bright, so I can have my shutter speed pretty fast. I don't really know why I'm setting up the tripod. I'm just setting up the tripod because that's what we do. So we'll see how fast I can get this done. And right now I've got the uh, 24 to 70 on the camera, but I want a wider angle. I should have brought my 14 millimeter really wide angle, but the 20 is going to have to do. But I think with a 14 millimeter, this would have looked 
even better. So I use the Acrotec long lens head, and no, I'm not an affiliate of Acrotec, but I absolutely love this setup. So it's got the leveling base at the very bottom, so I can look at the bubble here and level it out. Now it's perfectly level, and then I can rotate the camera and it'll stay level, and as well, I can go up and down, and this is what I really like to use for panos. This is the perfect landscape photography pano setup. But I'm not doing a panel right here, I'm just going for a good old wide angle. And I'm just going to throw it into live view just to kind of see what it's going to look like. And because there are a lot of lights and darks here, I'm going to use bracketing and therefore I will create an HDR photo. So as it turns out, since I am using bracketing, my shutter speed is going to be pretty slow uh, if I want 100 ISO. So it was a good choice actually to use the tripod. I'm using my trusty wired shutter release. I stuck a piece of Velcro on the back of it. Thank you to Wendy Klein from the Tim's Photos Academy Facebook group for that little tip. I love this thing now. And I have Velcro right here on the top of my tripod. I was dangling it by the wire before and now I just go boom. Why didn't I think of that? So I'm just about ready for my first series of three photos and let's take them. Done. Easy as that, I have one HDR photo ready for processing. So here's what it looks like. And I really like the left hand side here with all these tree trunks and the ferns and the sunlight, but I'm not crazy about this big dark side on the right. It's, it's creating an imbalance in the photo. So, cause I got so much dark on the right and it's so bright on the left, I would rather have something that it's more balanced with the lighting. So. Even though this has a great leaning line here, I want something different. This is not the shot yet. And of course, always, always check the histogram. And this is a pretty good histogram. It is touching the right side just a little bit, but this is HDR. So I have the dark one to choose from as well. And then the bright one to choose from. And that's the nice thing about shooting bracketing. You always have, some, even if you don't process to HDR, you always have something you can use. So when I saw Tim's uh, picture, I was thinking, you know what, looking at it, why don't we make it a little bit more interesting in pulling the camera a bit more over to the left as we're seeing more moss on this tree right here. And I know when you process the picture, it's going to bring out for sure more green and yet again, a different green than the lighter green we're seeing on the, on the trail. Let's try that out. Look at that amazing tree. Look at the moss, the color, the shades. Love it. Wow, this is so cool. The thickness of this moss is like a pillow. Amazing, soft, so beautiful, so alive. So it's still springtime, it's uh, the middle of May and the ferns haven't really grown to their full height but they have a more of a fresher, lighter green color than they do later on in the summer. So there is kind of a, a stand of ferns directly in front of the camera and I think that makes an interesting foreground element for this rainforest type of photo so I'm going to try and get that.
We just found this composition, which is nothing really special. It's just like there's no real one main subject, but it just speaks to me of rainforest and lush vegetation. So I just took a, a bracketed series of photos and then I thought, actually no, then Leah thought that we should put a person into the photo to give that sense of scale. So I placed her on the left of the frame and had her looking up and she's in the sunlight. It took a while to actually get her to position herself so that her face and head was actually in the sunlight. But I think this one shot will be really cool looking, especially with that HDR kind of processing, it'll be good. This is what I've been looking for. I've got the leading line and there is sort of sunlit forest on both the left and the right side of the trail. I think this is the one. So we shall see. Now I'm gonna set up and grab this. We're under a really tight timeline for this shoot. And one of the difficulties that I'm finding is to find an interesting main subject that is not so busy, not so complicated. Minimalist shots typically win the day. And with this type of foliage, this rainforest, there's just so much going on. It's just busy, busy, busy. And that's why leading line shots are why they look so good because they're simple and that's really the trick is to find something out of all this mess of rainforest that is simple and that is uncomplicated like this plant right here or not I couldn't really get a composition that wasn't simple so yeah finding a minimalist type of composition in this type of environment not really gonna happen. This is the last setup, and I think this is the one. Now, I always say that. I always think that this is the one, but I actually really do think this is the one. Uh, what I like about this last composition is that the forest floor is a little more uncluttered and we've got these trees that are uh, widely spaced, more sparse. There's mottled light of lights and darks that creates contrast. Got a really interesting fern in front of me. I think this is the one. So we just relocated and found a really amazing place that reminds me of Lord of the Rings. It's full of lush, rainforest type of ferns. All of the trees are covered in moss. It's hanging down and there are a million different compositions here. It's like difficult to even decide where to shoot next, but the, really the trick is finding that one main subject that can be isolated from the noise of the rest and that will tell a story. So that's what I'm looking to do right now, but check this place out. So I'm going to ask your opinion now. Uh, my three favorites, not in order, are number one and number two and number three. So leave a comment and tell me which one is your favorite photo from this particular photo shoot of the mossiest rainforest in all of Canada. I hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next video.